Hello and welcome to another DGCAD Revit 9 uh, update lesson and occasionally I get a question uh, where people want to do uh, framing plans um, for floor joists and beams etc and roof trusses and stuff so um, Revit uh, doesn't you know if you model it all in 3D then what you uh, get in your plans will be what you model in 3D and with the Revit structural tools and the beam tools and beam systems you can actually put in floor joists fairly easy fully 3D modeled objects um, trusses are a little trickier when you get into the roof system so um, traditionally what I do is um, I use um, I I show my framing just in in 2D and but there's still really no automated process in Revit to kind of get this done so what I've done is combine a couple things uh, using detail uh, line based families to produce a, a single detail item remember detail items if I type DL for detail line right now and I draw a line detail lines are different from regular lines if I go in here and draw a line that's a model line okay if I go into drafting and do a detail line detail lines only show up in the view that they're drawn perpendicular to that view so these lines are model lines and are 3d lines you can draw those wherever you want and they show up in in all the different views okay a detail line only shows up in the view that you're in the view it's drawn so this is my level one I'm in right now I'm in my level one so it's going to be shown in my level one floor plan detail lines so we're talking about 2d detail items and I'm going to solve this um, framing problem by creating a family a detail component family that's line based that I can turn around and stretch and that basically represents a joist or a truss whatever I want and I don't have it doesn't have to be dashed it can be a solid line if I want and I can go in here now and we'll build this family so I can go in here and I can go in I can say oh it's a two ply hit OK and it adds the extra ply in there and again I can stretch that and do whatever I want with it right back over there then I can click on it later and I can say no it is a two ply and a three ply okay or I can go back in I can add as many plies as I want I can make it a four ply beam okay something like that or I could maybe even go in and take two and three off and just leave one and something in there I'd have to work that out to make it be thicker but regardless all of these individual instances of this detail item that I've made this and this and this and this and this are all the same object okay there there is the control grip on it there and again I can go in here at any point and turn off as many plies as I want on that item and then all I do is is draw more of those items so I would take maybe and duplicate this floor plan and go duplicate and call this you know level one framing I would rename this in and call it you know framing level one okay and then inside of there I might go in VV for visibility graphics and then I might go in and take my walls and windows or something and make them you know um, half tone okay walls windows and doors your own personal preference to create this framing plan okay after I've duplicated it and now what I'll go down is I'll go to my family which is the one we're gonna make in a minute DG plan framing member I'm gonna click on that oops drag it into the drawing and it asks me to pick a point I'm gonna drag and pick a point from you know from there to there okay we can use our align tools if we want with this family that we're going to create by going and picking a oh I should align tab here to here and then lock it if I want and then if the wall moves then my detail item will move with it isn't that wonderful 2d object this will only show up in this view then from there I can take that and I can copy it I can array it I can do whatever I want with it it's just an object and each individual object can then be changed its length and then can be added in with as many plies as you want rotated whatever you want so it's just a flexible item that I can put in my floor plan and specify it as a joist or a truss okay I want to put one across I can also go click on here and say create similar if I want another one of those and go like that okay or I can click on this one and right click and say create similar and I'll get one of those okay again I can go in and do my aligning on stuff like this is not a problem tab over to there type of thing okay 
So this, 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 all the same type of item, all very flexible. So how do you make this item yourself? Okay, this is how we do it. We start by going File, New, Family. And inside of family, we're going to sort by name. We're going to go to my imperial templates here. Okay. And I'm going to type D for detail. And I want a detail component line based. That's the magic. We can also make detail component families. This is a line based, meaning you can stretch it. That's why we have that grip at the end where we can stretch it. Perfect. So we sit. Okay. Here we go. Beautiful template for making a family. Now all I have to do is I'm going to go in here. Because this is a detail and I just go and hit my lines on here and I'm going to use a rectangle command and I'm going to click over here and go down somewhere over here. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take that and make that 1.5 inches or whatever you please. Okay. The length I'm not too worried about. In fact, what I'm going to do for now, oops, is I'm going to uh, take this family type and change that length to be, oops, one foot doesn't matter it's going to be stretchable later just so it makes it smaller so I can zoom in for your own purpose right in here so to show you what I'm about to do now first of all this should be aligned so I'm going to take this I've got to make sure I only get the detail lines okay I'm trying to grab the box but there's a line underneath there that's the control line so I'm going to tab until I get all those chain of lines and then I'm going to say move from here because they have to be on that line Okay, now I'm botching this up. This is not working. I'm going to delete all these lines that I made. Okay, something wrong. There's my magic line. Okay, here we go again. Lines. I'm going to use my rectangle and I'm going to make sure to get on there and I'm going to click over to there and I'm going to take this and make that be 1.5 inches. Ah, okay. So then now I'm going to take this and I'm going to move this down to there okay because these are sitting on that magic line underneath if I tab through it okay this is a um, that's the um, the length line that's built so now I can say okay that's good now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, turn off my I'm going to type VV and I'm going to go into my annotation and turn off all my guidelines so all I have is my line work now I'm going to go like this, okay, and I'm going to say copy. Multiple, okay, as many plies as I want, I'm going to have four plies, okay. I'm also going to take all of these lines and make them be hidden lines, so they're kind of dashed, okay. And then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go make some parameters. I'm going to go in here, I'm going to add a parameter. I'm going to call this ply2. And, and I'm going to group that parameter under graphics. I want to be able to ch change each one individually in the floor plan. So I'm going to make it an instance. And this is the, uh, the, the clincher here. I'm going to go down and say it's a yes, no parameter. Okay. Done. There it is under graphics. Add a new one in. Here we go. Apply three. Group it in under graphics. It's instance. And it's an on-off thing. Done. Add another one in, apply four, group it under there, instance, yes, no, hit OK, hit apply, hit OK. Now, I'm going to grab these three top objects, go up to the properties and say you guys are not visible in the default and you are part of apply four, hit OK. Okay, then I'm going to grab this guy using my control button, these three guys, go into here, you are not visible in their normal circumstances and you are apply three. Hit OK. Then I'm going to grab these guys here. Go into the properties. You are a apply two. And that visibility is coming back on again, but that's okay because I need to go into parameters here and say by default, I don't want my plies on. Hit OK. Now when I go back to here, you'll see that this is off. And you'll notice that it's not picking up the hidden line type either. And it's actually kind of grayed out because by default, these objects up here, I should say these all these objects are off. And when I first draw it, the only thing you're going to see is this and then these get turned on. Now I can type VV for my visibility, go to my annotation, 
turn all my reference planes and dimensions back on. And there's my length parameter. I can go back to my length parameter and bump that back up to be six feet now, which is flexible in the end. Okay. Then I can go file and I'm going to do a save as. I'm going to save as and I'm just going to place this in my own folder here. Um, yeah, we'll place it in the Imperial Training and we'll call this, you know, DG um, Plan Frame Member. DG Plan Frame Member. RFA Family File. Save it. Okay. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to say push that out to be, you know, on my, uh, this one that I was working in before. Okay. And I'll zoom down over here somewhere. Okay, now I can go grab that component. Um, I can do from drafting. I could probably go to detail component here, DG plan frame member. There it is there. Click on that object that I just made, drag it down. Okay, go up to that object, click on it, maybe copy a couple over. Array them, do whatever you want. Try your repeating detail. We haven't got to that yet. Okay, click on there, and now we can go into here and say, oh, you are a two-ply or a three-ply. Okay, and then in the end, we can take this and we can stretch that to be whatever we want. So this could be a joist, it could be a truss, it could be a header, it could be a stringer, it could be a, any member you want. It doesn't have to be dashed. Edit family, we go back and edit. If you don't want them to be dashed, then you pick on them, you know, and you, you grab them here. Filter to just be the lines. And then you say, no, you're not hidden lines. You know, you are, you know, light lines or maybe you want heavy lines, medium lines. And then save it. And then we'll push it back out to our project. It's going to ask us to overwrite and override parameter values. Yes. Now we have the same thing, but now we don't have dash lines. If that's the way you want to do it. Copy them, rotate them, mirror array anything you want very flexible it's a still a manual 2d process but it sure makes it a lot easier to be able to um, grip those and draw them in and copy them around again remember right click create similar will give you a double in this case and if i if i click on this one and right click and say create similar it'll give me a single okay and of course they don't have to they can be diagonal or whatever you want once you click on it you grip on here and stretch it or if you want you can actually go into the length parameter over here no not gonna work so a little bit on uh, framing and creating a 2d detail component to make your framing life a lot easier